are at JKJ Lavatory today, and today we will be demonstrating the delicate art of the barrettes in an acid face decoration. So there you have it, the end. Wait, what? Rewind from the beginning! So yes, here we go! To make one thing clear, in the United States, we spell buret as B-U-R-E-T, not B-U-R-E-T-T-E. -E. It is the French who spell it with the letter. Mais parce que nous ne sommes pas français, so we will be using the U.S. spelling for our sake. So, what is a buret? A buret is used to measure the exact volume of liquid. In this demonstration, it will be used to carry out an acid-base titration, which is the most common use of burettes. An Erlenmeyer flask is often, most often used in titration. Let's understand the parts. Here is the burette clump. It will stabilize the burette itself. This is called the ring stand. And the Erlenmeyer flask will be placed here. Today we will be using the double ring stand, and this is the burette. The burette consists of the graduate glass tube and the stopcock. How to read the burette. Before we begin, you need to know how to read a meniscus. On the image, there is a part that is lower, the convex, and then a part that is smiling up to the sides. The lowest point of the convex is the meniscus, and that is the point where measurements should be taken. Keep this in mind as you do your initial and final readings. Remember to do these readings at eye level. You'll most likely need a funnel to insert the titrant. You may need to lift the funnel in this way, slightly, make sure the solution flows in fluently to the burette. First, make sure that the burette is clean with no water as it could change the concentration of the titrant. Next, rinse the burette with the titrant that will be used in the titration. Let the titrant flow out of the tip and make sure that there are no bubbles present at the tip and the tip is not leaking. This will ensure accurate results. The burette should be secured to the burette clamp. You put your thumb and your pointy finger to control the clamp. Press to open and release to close. Place the burette in the upright vertical position accurately parallel to the ring stand. This step is crucial to take an accurate reading of the meniscus. Your left hand will control the stopcock and the right hand will control the swirling of the flask. The left hand will somewhat grab the entire stopcock in the thumb and pointy finger during the actual control. Swirling must be in continuous as the color changes temporarily each time the solution is added. However, in this case, I have a helper with me so I can control the stopcock while my partner controls the swirling. Now we're ready, ready to start, start the experiment. experiment! No, we're not! When an acid is added to a base, it is usually exothermic, which means that the flask will become slightly warm. Second, remember to wear goggles so that the strong acid or base cannot attack your vulnerable eyes. Always wear goggles or else you might regret after losing an eyeball or two, which might be a little too late. Make sure you have your closed-toed shoes, and make sure that you have your lab coat on. This part of the burette is called the stopcock. The stopcock is used to control the amount of liquid used for titration. By putting the stopcock in vertical position, the liquid will be allowed to flow through. By putting the stopcock in horizontal position, the liquid will stop flowing. In your Erlenmeyer flask, insert the known solution along with 2-3 to three drops of indicator, which will do the trick in showing the end point. There are many types of indicators. This table will show you what you will see. This mis paper is the most accurate, but since it must be added to the solution, phenylalapithaline is the most common. The graph you see is the graph of acid and base. The equivalence point is when the solution is neutral at a pH of 7. The end point is where the indicator changes color. This point is not at 7, but a bit above. The end point is where you would know that your titration experiment is completed. Add the titrant in little by little into the flask or beaker. Remember to swirl after each addition. The point that the color changes permanently is your end point. Keep going until you reach that point. Over titrated. Note the initial point. Here is the point where the end point has been reached, when the color has completely changed. Note the meniscus at this point as your final volume. Remember not to go beyond the 50 point as accurate measurements cannot be made. In our experiment, the titrum was a known concentration of NaOH. There was an unknown concentration of HCl. This is the general equation for titrations. NM1V1 equals NM2V2. Now as a final note, Remember to do this trial several times to check for consistency. Okay.